up, Internet? Josh Hewitt, Top Four Fitness. It's time to do it with Hewitt. This is another episode of my Road to Rip series. Today I want to talk about Peak Week. So I'm right into my peak week now. Got my meals all planned out, got my training program set, supplementation is all outlined. There's a lot of different points of view or perspectives around how to approach a peak week. My point of view, which I believe is backed by most of the research, is that if you're not drug enhanced, if you're natural, a less extreme approach is preferred. Let's outline some of the key components of a peak week that I'm looking at going forward. You can modify these, I mean, keep in mind, that these sort of routines are always personalized depending on your current carbohydrate intake, your body weight, your training routine, uh, how lean you are, etc. But these are some things to consider. First of all, nutrition. Everything around nutrition is really focused around your carb loading and depleting when it comes to peak week. Your proteins and fats are going to keep pretty consistent at where you've been at up to this point. Now in general, most people approach it uh, peak week with a carb depletion. I do the same thing, I'm going to be spending several days reducing my carbohydrate intake um, to deplete my glycogen, glycogen stores slightly, but again, less extreme is better with this. And then leading into the competition, competition two to three days of increasing or loading, carbohydrate loading would be recommended to fully load up those glycogen stores and the idea is that when you previously depleted you're going to have super compensation and you'll take in a lot of glycogen storage. Um, but again, if you've been on a very low carbohydrate diet for a long period of time, you don't want to go crazy with your load. So this should be a measured approach depending on where you're at, how big you are, etc. Uh, so I have my carbohydrate load. I'm planning just for two days out, Thursday, Friday, I'm going to be loading carbohydrates. Uh, if you want to spend a little bit more time, you can start earlier in the week and be more gradual about it. The main idea is that you can monitor your carbohydrate intake to see, to make sure you're not spilling over, but you do want to fully load your glycogen stores. There's very little point to carb loading if you don't get your, at least your glycogen stores loaded up. <clears throat> Along with that, I like to take alpha lipoic acid and green tea extract. This improves insulin sensitivity, might, may improve glucose uptake so that the carbohydrates you consume during your loading phase are going to get shuttled into the muscles more efficiently. Secondly, playing with your water and your sodium, again, Less messing around here is better. However, I do recommend loading up or in gradually increasing your water intake early in the week. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I regularly, regularly consume about 3 liters of water a day. I'm going to ramp that up to almost double that. 5 to 6 liters by midweek, near the end of the week. <clears throat> then I'm going to reduce my water back down to normal. Maybe 2 to 3 liters. I don't recommend cutting your water out completely. Sometimes I hear people that the day before or the day of barely drinking any water at all, or just sipping water in the competition. You need to have some water, you need to be hydrated to shovel those carbohydrates into the muscle. Really there's no point. And the same goes with sodium. Cutting out your sodium completely to avoid water retention will upset your electrolyte balance and it can, it can end up making you look very flat. You won't be able to get a pump at all. So keep your salt or your sodium intake the same. The day before and the day of the competition, you may want to bring down your water intake slightly. On the day of, it's really just uh, drink water as needed. You may not want to drink a lot of water because if you run in the washroom all the time. But you do need a little bit of sodium and you need to stay hydrated to help those carbohydrates shuttle into the muscle so you get nice full uh, muscle bellies and you can get a pump. Third, training. The main thing with your training the day of the competition is to cut back on the volume and the intensity. So use a little bit lighter weights than you typically would. Um, I'm going to be doing full body circuits focusing on primarily an upper extremity. It's a physique competition so legs aren't emphasized. The point here is not to necessarily get a training effect. I mean whatever, wherever I'm at this week is where I'm at. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to, to continue to train. You want to stimulate those muscles so that they're encouraged to draw in glycogen. So I don't look at this so much as a depletion workout, but my repetition range is going to be higher. I'm not training to complete fatigue, but I do want to uh, train so that when I eat my carbohydrate, high carb meals, it will encourage glycogen storage into the muscles. I also recommend posing. So practice your posing a lot this week. 
I've been hitting my posing routine every day for the most part. I try to get that in as part of my workout routine. So basically, when I do my cardio training in the morning or I hit my core workouts, I treat my posing routine as part of that. So I've been practicing my posing in front of the mirror so I can make corrections that way, but I've also been doing it uh, without looking at a mirror and videotaping it so that I can see what I do unconsciously when I, I can't self-correct in the mirror. And I've been using the video as an analysis tool to make some corrections and take notes on that. And also to send the prep coach I'm working with, Joe Hughes, to send him footage of my, of my posing and help get some feedback from him as well. Uh, I find it uh, very helpful to work with an experienced coach. When you're first getting into a physique or bodybuilding competition, this is my first physique comp. So even though I do have a good background of knowledge in training and nutrition, when it comes to posing and peak week prep and all the other things that go along with the competition, it, it really makes sense to hire a professional who has an experience. I recommend looking for someone who has a science-based and evidence-based approach who can back up their approach with research, show you the studies, explain why they're taking this approach. You'll get a lot of coaches who just do it the way it's always been done. Uh, they may have a couple of athletes that have been successful and they base their reputation on that. But you really need to get on top of the current research when it comes to this sort of stuff because you can mess yourself up during peak week. You could train hard for months and then during peak week you can blow it all out of the water. So you gotta get this shit down. All right, the other thing is with your, um, your cardiovascular training, if you've been doing HIT, I do recommend cutting that back to just some uh, low intensity steady state cardio, uh, not very long duration, uh, during your peak week. The intensity of your training should be down a bit. Cut back on the high intensity interval training at this point. Uh, the day before the competition, I would also focus on practicing your posing and just some uh, pump work for the target muscle groups that you want to really accentuate. For me, it's going to be medial delts and core lats. So again, the big thing is, if you're drug free, don't go too extreme with things. You're not going to cut out all your sodium and have no water the day before and the day of the contest. It's going to keep some, some water in there. Uh, you do want to gradually uh, cut down your carbohydrates and bring up your water a little bit earlier in the week and then super compensate near the end of the week when you load up on carbs and reduce the intensity and volume of your training. Some full body circuit training will do the trick with a little higher repetition range. I have a free peak week report that you can take advantage of uh, on my online coaching site yourgymtrainer.com 3D abs, so 3D slash abs Check that out, it's included with the 3 app program. That will cover everything you need to know as well in a little bit more detail. I hope you liked the video, give it a like, make sure you subscribe, and until next time, let the games begin.